everybody. How's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. Uh, before we get into the uh, cool stuff for this episode, I just want to uh, point out a couple of uh, relatively large changes we're making uh, to the show. Um, we were publishing uh, twice a week and uh, doing uh, 42 episodes per season, since 42 is a special number. Um, however, uh, I, I wanted to, to uh, start doing episodes that were a little more uh, geeky or evergreenish type in content as opposed to uh, news per se. And so uh, we're dropping um, production of the Geekinator down to once a week, Friday evenings. This is season seven, episode one. There will be 21 episodes per season, just like we have for our sister show, Linux News Log. And then in addition to that, I have uh, started production on some other epi uh, episodes of the Geek Nerd. It'll be similar to the Geek Nerd, but not news related. It'll be uh, uh, geek lifestyle or geek and technology lifestyle type episodes. There'll be uh, six episodes per season of that. There'll be about 10 minutes a piece. And um, the production of those, because it takes a little bit longer to do the production, it'll be somewhat irregular. So I'll have them queued up uh, and, and, you know, release, you know, uh, you know, a season at a time or something like that. So it'll be about an hour of content per season. Anyway, uh, there'll be more discussion about that as things move along. But in the here and the now, um, uh, let's go ahead and get into the stories for the Geekinator for this episode. Over at latimes.com, a federal jury has handed a symbolic victory to Samsung by ordering the South Korean smartphone maker to pay only a fraction of the damages that Apple had requested in the rival's high-profile patent trial. So we've been covering this for a while. Uh, several days of deliberation were involved. An eight-person jury found Friday that some Samsung electronics smartphones and tablets infringed patents held by Apple. However, instead of awarding the $2.2 billion that Apple uh, was going for, they awarded $119.6 million in damages. Um, so even though Samsung lost the court case, they got a symbolic victory because it didn't cost them nearly as much as what Apple was going for. Uh, you know, I, a lot of this stuff, I, I just kind of have to, you know, take with a grain of salt and, you know, Apple can say it's worth X amount of money, but really at the end of the day, it's the, it's the juries that decide how much one company pays another in terms of damages. So there you go. From valuewalk.com, Cisco replaces WebEx Social with Jive, the largest computer networking uh, equipment manufacturer announced its dis decision to discontinue offering its homegrown WebEx social service and will replace it with a more competitive product from Jive Software, Inc. So Peter Ulander, uh, the vice president of collaboration uh, solutions uh, marketing at Cisco Systems, wrote, uh, throughout the past decade, Cisco has continued to weave social into the fabric of our own uh, collaboration portfolio. At the same time, we continuously looked for opportunities to collaborate with other companies to integrate new technologies and improve what we can offer our customers, bringing the best of the best together to improve our customers, to provide our customers with the ideal solution to fit their business needs. The maker of computer networking equipment will continue to provide support for WebEx Social for its cloud customers for another two years. Uh, for customers who installed WebEx Social on their own servers, you they will provide support uh, for uh, uh, another three years. The company said it will continue uh, the WebEx online meeting service, although the project-based product will be terminated. So... You'll still be able to do WebEx for meetings. And I've actually worked at companies where that was how you did meetings. Now, GoToMeeting is also another 
uh, online meeting service and uh, it also is relatively popular. So, you know, between the two of them, I actually prefer WebEx or uh, not WebEx. I actually prefer GoToMeeting uh, over WebEx. WebEx is a little bit um, Cisco-y, for lack of a better way of saying it. I mean, it is from Cisco, but um, GoToMeeting is, is a lot more open source uh, or multi-platform, not open source, but a lot more multi-platform um, than uh, WebEx is, but still pretty cool nonetheless. From uh, tomsguide.com, Facebook and Google users are threatened by a new security flaw. That's right. Uh, we just got over one security flaw, uh, the heart bleed, uh, heart bleed security flaw. Well, there's a new one. Uh, there are two security standards, um, OAuth 2.0 and OpenID. There is a new flaw that has been discovered. It's been dug to covert redirect. Um, both of these standards are employed across the internet to let users log into websites using their credentials from other sites. So for example, if you go to a website like Pinterest and uh, you can either log in with your Pinterest account or you can log in with your Facebook credentials. Um, you know, this is the stand, you know, a lot of websites do this. They allow you to log in with your Facebook or your, or your Google Plus credentials. There's a couple of other credential providers out there, but um, th that behind under the covers, the two protocols primarily used are OAuth 2.0 and the OpenID, and that's where this flaw has been discovered. So what this <laughs> happens to do is open you up to a third party being able to access your personal information, which is kind of scary. Um, you know, they can uh, disguise and launch phishing attempts from legitimate websites. There's a whole bunch of, I mean, this is expected, but at the same time, unwelcome, if you, if you know what I mean. You know, got to fix it, but really bad timing. Anyway, um, over at Business Week, Apple buys a tiny LED display maker, LuxView, as deal making increases. Um, LuxView Technology Corp. It's a startup that specializes in power-efficient displays could be used in small consumer devices lacking space for bulky screens or batteries. They buy smaller technology companies from time to time and generally do not discuss their pur purpose or plans, says Apple. Um, so pretty interesting. Should be, uh, I'm curious to see what, what they are ultimately planning to do. I mean, we'll see uh, what they're planning to do as, as time rolls on. From Information Week, I hate it when it does that. Uh, from Information Week, CenturyLink cuts prices and doubles cloud capacity. They're rapidly expanding their cloud data center capacity by dropping prices. They've doubled the public cloud capacity that uh, it got when it acquired Tier 3 last November and is seeking to remain competitive with Amazon, Google, and Microsoft on key services. So Tier 3 software and operation style became the public cloud infrastructure for CenturyLink, available in nine data center locations operated through Tier 3. They've also started adding cloud availability to data centers from its 2011 acquisition of Savvis. Savvis is the backbone of another phase of CenturyLink's business, CenturyLink Technology Solutions, which provides managed and hosted services for government and enterprises. So, uh, Pretty interesting. I'm not a huge CenturyLink fan or even customer, so uh, this I'm largely unaffected by this. But if you're a CenturyLink customer, and I know there, are, you know, obviously there are a lot of CenturyLink customers out there. Otherwise, they would not be able to afford to do this sort of thing. But uh, you know, I'm curious to see what uh, people have to say about this. Shoot me an email, geekinator at quicksurf.com. From TechCrunch, Facebook promotes the VP of product, Chris Cox, to chief product officer, but uh, there is no organizational change. Pretty interesting. Uh, Chris Cox helped invent Newsfeed and devised Facebook's social by design strategy. So now the company is recognizing his critical contributions by promoting the VP of product to chief uh, product officer. The new title won't come with any organizational change, but cements the 31-year-old Cox as a leader of Facebook alongside COO Sheryl Sandberg. Mark Zuckerberg delivered the news to the company in an internal announcement this afternoon. And that would be this afternoon, as in Friday, March 
2nd, or May 2nd. So pretty interesting. From LA Times, again, in their science section, NASA's Curiosity rover will, will yield its drill on Mars for the third time. This is uh, pretty cool for Mars uh, rover Curiosity is considering boring into the third rock ever drilled on the red planet, a sandstone that could potentially reveal a wealth of information about past life-friendly environments. The rover already did a little test drilling Tuesday on the target rock known as Winjana, named for a gorge in Western Australia, according to officials at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in La Canada Flint Ridge, which manages the Mars robot. The operation left a hole in the fine-grained sandstone that was about 0.8 inches deep with a heap of powdery pulverized rock surrounding it. The dug-up rock powder was a grayish color in stark contrast to the reddish-brown of the surface. So, pretty interesting. Um, they intend to have Curiosity drill for a powdered rock sample at this site in the coming days. So, I'm curious to see what comes of it. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I will see you then.